So here are some servers I recently acquired. If you notice, these are actually Google branded mini servers. So I've actually gone and researched what the heck these things are for. And it's so if you have like, if your company has like a database of users and groups and all that type of stuff, you can do a Google search using their algorithm on your stuff. They, this is an old model from about 2004. They've kept updating and making new ones until about 2009 with an R710. I think they made a main R720 version in around 2011. Um, they've said they are going to cancel the project a year or two ago, and they've now officially stopped it. So, yeah, I haven't really played with this guy very much. Got it from a pile of used servers in Iraq, and yeah, I haven't really done much. I pulled out the hard drive. Hard drive is an utter pain. It has the most god-awful mounting system with these little pegs that screws to the bottom. So I have to pull it out of the rack. They aren't the new, the good hot swap caddies like a lot of people do. It's a pretty boring little thing, though. So, and here's one of the drives. I think I fired it up or I checked the drive and it had an encrypted version of Ubuntu 12, I want to say, on it. Yeah, I want to say that was like the kernel version it said. Which would mean this is not an original OS because this is made in about 2004. And, you know, Ubuntu 12 is about eight years too new for that. So let's go pop around and take a look. So this is where the hard drive goes. God awful mounting system, as I said before. It took me several minutes to take it out. This little thing should go right here, which is a little air blocker. Um, we got a fan here. This fan's pretty bad. It's really loud and just ugly sounding. It's a big blower fan. I think those, it's Delta, made by Delta, but it's an old one, so it sounds bad. I want to say it's a nice ball bearing then, though. Empty space here. I want to say you can put another drive in it. You could easily fit a two and a half inch and just chuck it there. You got a power supply. It's a standard ATX power supply. You got a, it has the standard four pin and 24. I think that's a 24. Pretty darn sure it's 24. And on output here, it is rated for a, a whopping, I think it's a 250. Yeah, it's a 250. No, it's a 300. It's a 280 for 120 or a 330 for a 240. So that's more than enough for the hardware we have in here. So this is an old motherboard. I think I looked up the, it's a super micro board. As you can see, I think it has branding somewhere. I don't know exactly where. Super micro branded board. Um, if we lift up this piece, we see the big copper heat sink. You can see, um, I want to say there's a Pentium 4 in it. It's OJ775, as you can tell. Big um, FSB heat sinks. Southbridge heat sink. I think this is a bracket here. I want to say for maybe IMPI or something else. Um, dual Broadcom NICs. Broadcom's pretty nice. NIC work wise, I'd still say Enter's better. Got the PCI X slot and a ton of standard PCIs. No AGP slots. So you can tell it's not for that. You have an external. Um, PCI, um, PCI slot on the back, but no visor card, so you really can't use it at all. It's completely useless. Four RAM slots. Yeah, not with that much to see here. On the back, we have power supply, its little fan. Um, we got power inlet. Got the motherboard, so we got a parallel port. We got a serial port, um, VGA2. I think these are gigabit NICs. PS2 and two USB ports, and a ton of ventilation. You can imagine this thing runs pretty loud and hot because I think it has a P4 in it. Pentium 4. Yeah, so let's hook it up to my little test bench and see what she does. So here we are on a little test bench. We see power connectors here. Plug it in. Here the little click of the power supply plugged into this keyboard and mouse over here. Um, we got network in it for TFT boot. Man, that sucker's loud. Let's see if she posts. So it's been about a minute and it isn't posting, so let's pull the plug. Doesn't want to post, so let's try pulling out some RAM sticks. A lot of the times they don't post because they're unhappy about RAM. I have another box exactly like this one, same model, same Google server. So yeah, um, hoping it's RAM. I think that other guy had some RAM issues, so hopefully that fixes it. Plugged in again, heard the same power supply click. It turned on it on its own last time, so let's push the power button this time. Fans are roaring again. It's loud. I don't know how well you can hear me, but this thing's, oh, we got the post beep. So here's the screen. Google boot logo, which is kind of cool. They modified that. That's the old Google logo. You can see it's initializing the network cards. It's 2004 is about all old this is. Um, I don't think there's a link yet. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have a link. It glows, but it should have a link. I know this cable's plugged into something. 
um, and it just got and it boots into my DHCP menu. Let's try to do something. Doesn't want to do anything. I'm gonna see if it boots automatically. Otherwise, I'm gonna try my PS2 keyboard. Let me get out a PS2 keyboard and hopefully that works. And I got a PS2 keyboard now, so this seems to kind of be working. Let's try to get into the Ubuntu installer. This is the um, Ubuntu server installer, but you can install the desktop with it. Let's take a quick stop at the BIOS before we do other stuff now. Um, okay, so date's actually set correctly. Time is off. I'm gonna set that later. Detects my hard drive just fine. It says I have a gig of RAM. I'm gonna try messing with the RAM to see if I can get it to use more later. BIOS features, quick and quiet boot. Not that much here. Advanced. ECC is enabled. Don't know why you turn that off. I guess it's slightly faster without ECC. On, um... You can change it so you can have 8 megs of video memory instead of 1. USB control is on, but it doesn't seem to like that. Um, Hyperthreading's on. I think this chip supports hyperthreading. The Pentium 4, some of them did. Boot. Um, I don't think I really changed anything. I'm going to go back and change the time and then get back into the installer. So here we are at the partition table. It sees the 200 gig drive just fine. And it says it's just going to make it. I think I had CentOS installed on this drive before, but it's fine. I didn't really care about any of the data. Writing the changes, and we are formatting. Seems to be working fine. I've made it all the way through the installer until now. It's connected to the internet. Worked it. So it didn't want to boot into um, Kubuntu it w or Xbuntu. It would just show the Xbuntu um, boot screen, and then it would just be blank. It was running, but it's blank. So, wow, I feel like an idiot. So, the reason why these weren't working was because I was trying to run 64-bit OS's on 32-bit computers. I apparently completely overlooked the fact these are 32-bit Pentium 4's in here. It's running right now Debian 8 perfectly fine. It's fairly zippy actually too. Uh, I have Firefox in this thing. If we go on the internet, Firefox. It's perfectly zippy, it's loud as heck, but it works, which is nice. That thing was annoying me so much. Um, there's Firefox. It's fairly reasonable. If you want, I can run like the Kraken online benchmark. So I ran everything. It ran Blender. Blender's really slow. BMW benchmark took about one and a half hours. Yeah, it's pretty slow. But it runs. Actually, it's fairly zippy with um, Debian. You do still feel a good amount of slowdown and stuff, but I mean, I can play YouTube fairly reasonably, stuff like that. Temperature-wise, I think I have a temperature monitor up here. I don't know if it wants to report it correctly. No, of course not. It doesn't. Here, I have the temp 2. Uh, focus on this thing's annoying. Okay, so there's something called temp 1, I want to say, CPU on here. Gotta be a made way to do this. Fan, it also reports fan RPM correctly too. So temp one right now it's about 45 degrees. This thing runs pretty hot. Under load it's about 65. You could feel quite a bit of warm air coming out of the back of this thing. I got the other one to set up. Both network ports seem to work fine. No gigabit ports, which is nice, but your CPU isn't great, so you're gonna kinda run into some limitations there. Yeah, but it's a fairly reasonable system after I realized it's a 32-bit OS. So thanks for watching me try horribly to get this to work, and then realize it's a really dumb mistake. So keep watching for more dumb mistakes like this on this channel.